Well, you can open up to the book of Mark, chapter 1, and I know some of you are most excited today because you actually get to eat popcorn while I'm preaching. That is only allowed today, so enjoy it while it lasts and don't get butter on the pages of your Bible. Turn to Mark, chapter 1, verse 21. The series is called, Who is Jesus? The Gospel of Mark, and the sermon today is called, A Day in the Life of Jesus. This passage records one day, sun up to sundown in the life of Jesus. I wonder if you could spend one day with any famous person throughout history, dead or alive, who would you pick to spend one day with if you could? Turn to the person next to you and tell them who you'd pick. Go ahead. Turn, turn next to them. You now, you don't have to say Jesus. That's a given. But I mean, besides Jesus... Maybe if you're a techie, you'd be like, I'd like to spend a day with Steve Jobs. Maybe if you're a sports fanatic, you'd be like, I'd want to spend a day with Michael Jordan. The day that he wins the sixth NBA title, count me in, I'm there. Maybe you're a history buff and you'd want to, you'd want to go to D-Day and just sit there from a distance and watch the whole thing unfold. I don't know. Maybe you'd want to spend, if you love music, a day with Elvis. Any Elvis fans out there? Maybe you'd want to spend a day with the Beatles, the day they came to America. Can you imagine if you got to spend one full day with a famous person of your choice? The early apostles got to spend the whole day with Jesus in Capernaum, and it was Peter's hometown. Imagine if that person who you'd want to spend a day with was coming over to your house. So today we're going to spend a day with Jesus and in the text, we are going to see incredible things for the first time because it's early in the ministry of Jesus. Nobody had ever heard of him before. There were like no Christians on earth. There were zero churches. Nobody ever went to Sunday school. So imagine seeing the ministry of Jesus for the first time. That's where we are going today. Let's pray, and then we'll get into the word together. Lord Jesus, we are going to hear incredible things today. Just one day in your life, we're going to be blown away. Just like the early apostles were amazed. Just like the people who sat in front of you were blown away. Open our eyes to see who you are, Jesus, in your glory. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Mark chapter 1, verse 21. It begins basically in the church of their day which was called a synagogue only they met on saturday so put yourself there imagine you're in a synagogue and imagine you are at like you're wearing your church clothes and it's very serious like it's very ser you're going to the synagogue right and there's a lot of religious people around that's where they're at so it says in verse 21 and they went into capernaum and immediately on the sabbath he entered the synagogue and was teaching so Jesus is the preacher. How awesome is that? It says they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. So you can write this down first. The sermon notes are written in the voice of the apostles. In other words, if the apostles, if we ask them, what was it like to spend a day with Jesus? Number one, write this down. We heard doctrines Jesus alone could fulfill. We heard doctrines Jesus alone could could fulfill there they are in the synagogue on the sabbath and we know what jesus did because uh john records one of jesus's sermons that had already happened and so what would happen is they would call for the scroll and then the the religious people the scribes they would bring out the scroll and he would call for like maybe isaiah and this is what it would look like i mean you've got your bible on your iphone am i right Who's got a real Bible here? Hold up, hold up your Bible if you've got a real paper Bible with you. Congratulations. Okay, imagine lugging this thing around into church, right? And if you had scrolls on your own, you kind of maybe had to guess what scroll they were, because this, you know, so this is what it would look like. They bring out the scroll, then Jesus would unroll the scroll, and then he, he what he would do is he would read from a passage in the Old Testament, and then what he did was he would read it, and then he would say, today, this is fulfilled in your hearing. And they would be blown away because he would claim to not just be teaching the word of God, but he would claim to 
be the word of God. And they were amazed. That word that's in the passage there, it says they were astonished at his teaching. It means they were struck. Okay, so just turn to the person next to you and whack them on the arm. Just slap them. Just get them. If it's your spouse and he's in the doghouse, give him a little extra. All right, whack. That's what that word means. They were astonished. They were struck. They were hit. They were wham. What struck them? What hit them? What shocked them? It, it's not that Jesus was a great preacher. It's not like he had some really good jokes or memorable lines. It's that he claimed to fulfill the Bible. Now, they had been waiting 2,000 years of written biblical history since Abraham for the Messiah to come, the promised miracle child who would bring the blessing to the world. The fact that the countdown was over blew them away. And there were Pharisees there and maybe some scribes. The Pharisees were typically in charge of the synagogues. You probably know some very serious religious people. Depending on the tradition you grew up in, I was raised in the Catholic tradition, a lot of very serious religious people in the church when you show up. Am I right? Now put yourself in that environment. And it says they were astonished at Jesus because he wasn't like them. Huh? What does that mean? It means that they perceived he was greater than them. So there was the serious religious people, the rule followers, the good people, right? They know the whole Bible. And, and Jesus was greater than them. And it blew them away. So they heard doctrines that only Jesus could fulfill. Jesus claimed to have divine authority that exceeded all the Bible teachers, which made them feel like he's the one. Do you know when Jesus preached this sermon in his hometown and said, what you have heard is now fulfilled? They walked him up to the top of a hill to throw him off the hill, to kill him for blasphemy. Because they knew he, a mere man, was claiming to be God, divine. They wanted to kill him, but Jesus just walked right through the crowd. They couldn't hurt him because God's hand of protection was upon him. So if the disciples were here today, they would say, we, day in the life of Jesus, we heard doctrines only he could fulfill. So write this down. Are you amazed that Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament? Are you amazed that Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament? They've been waiting for thousands of years for Jesus to come. Now, we're a little different, but it's somewhat similar. We've been waiting for thousands of years to Christ to, for Christ to come again. That's really simply put what the Bible is. The Old Testament got the world ready for Christ to come. The New Testament is getting the world ready for Christ to come again. It's that simple. So are you amazed that Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament? We don't like to wait. Maybe you're waiting for something right now. Our van is in the shop because there's a leak in the back and one of the doors was a little glitchy and the fuel door my kids won't admit which one of them did it but the fuel door was open and somebody opened the sliding door and jammed the fuel door into the hook so the fuel door won't close anymore i've got to put a magnet on the fuel door to keep it closed pretty embarrassing so we've been waiting for the van to be repaired i took it in a couple weeks ago oh yes sir we will have this done for you by tonight and i'm like you're lying Sure enough, it's a week later, the van's still not done. So Jared's got to drive Lauren and uh, to school, and we've only got, you know, we're down a car. It's a hassle. We've got to wait for the van to be repaired. I don't know what you're waiting for. Hey, we're waiting for thousands of years for Christ to come. I don't know if you're a college football fan. I'm not a huge college football fan, but my daughter lives in Nashville. So I heard there was a commotion last night in Nashville because of college football. Did you hear what happened? So Alabama's number one. Vanderbilt's a school full of uh, nerds, they say, you know, not necessarily the most athletic school. They hadn't beat Alabama in 40 years. Somehow, somehow they beat the number one ranked team yesterday and the whole stadium went wild. They literally poured onto the field, went into this frenzy of celebration, tore the goalposts down, and then paraded them through the streets of Nashville and threw them into the river. So I'm texting my daughter like, are you part of this parade? Insane things are happening in Nashville. Now look, that was after 40 years of waiting to beat a football team. 
Imagine what it felt like to be waiting for thousands of years for the Messiah to come. It's tear down the goalpost time. It's let's get this news into the street time. They are blown away. So my question is, are you blown away? Are you amazed? Are you struck? Are you astonished that the time has arrived? Jesus has arrived and he fulfilled the Old Testament. It's amazing that God can predict anything in advance. If I told you tomorrow that I already know what you're going to wear, and then you called me and said, okay, fine, smarty pants, what am I wearing? And I got your outfit perfect, you'd be like, oh, he's amazing. If you told me anything about tomorrow, it would be incredible if you could see the future. And 2,000 years before it happened, God was talking to Abraham about Jesus 1,500 years before it happened, Moses was hearing it. 1,000 years before it happened, David was hearing about it. 700 years before it happened, Isaiah was talking about it. Folks, this is thousands of years in advance. God's calling a shot. Are you amazed at how the Old Testament predicted the coming of the Christ? Are you amazed? This shows that we know who Jesus is because of the Word of God. He taught with spiritual authority as the Messiah who fulfilled the Old Testament and who spoke with heaven's authority as one who was greater than all the scribes. Does that amaze you? Does that amaze you? Jesus would talk in the book of Luke at the end. He would say from the Psalms and the Proverbs and the prophets and Moses, you say, they all speak of me. They, they all speak of me. And he, he told the Pharisees and the scribes, he said, you, you think you're good with God because you know the scriptures, but they speak of me, listen, and you don't come to me to be saved. Do you know you can know the Bible and not be saved? Do you know who knows the Bible better than anyone here at church today? It's the prince of darkness. Oh, Satan knows his Bible. He knows his Bible better than you, and he can ruin you with it, if all you have is a knowledge up here, even the demons believe in God and they tremble. So have you come to Jesus to be saved? Do you realize that he has spiritual authority to reveal the will of God? He is the appointed Messiah, the only one who will be crowned king forever according to the word of God. Is that who Jesus is to you? So a day in the life of Jesus started with Jesus preaching and then during the sermon... Things got crazy. Let's read on. Verse 22, they were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. Verse 23, and immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. An unclean spirit is a demon. And he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsing him, crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere, throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. All right, so number one, we heard doctrines Jesus alone could fulfill. Number two, we encountered demons Jesus alone could command. You could write that down. We encountered demons Jesus alone could command. So this is the part of the story where it says, just then a demon cried out. Talk about the scariest thing that could happen during church, during synagogue, all serious. Everyone's quiet. Jesus is preaching. And then a guy cries out screaming in a dark disturbing voice oh my goodness this is really scary if the person sitting next to you started yelling in a creepy dark voice you would move your chair you'd get up to go get more popcorn am i right can you put yourself there they're just listening to jesus he's such a good man he's teaching a good sermon that's someone screaming this is freaky this is a scary time of the year for my dog cosmo how many of you have dogs? You take them for a walk. Do they get scared of the Halloween decorations? Because my golden doodle Cosmo does. He really doesn't like, and people, is it just me? They're getting more elaborate with their Halloween decorations. 
These giant skeletons are appearing in our neighborhood. Our neighbor has this whole graveyard, and then he's got a pumpkin section, inflatable ghosts. Like, where do they find this stuff? But what, what Cosmo is really afraid of is there's this skeleton that kind of is coming out of the ground. This giant it's just like looks like it's crawling out of the ground. So what he does is he hides. He hides behind our leg, and then he pulls us to the other side of the street. Because it's so scary. We have a glamorized fascination with ghosts, witches. Halloween is mostly just dress up. But we learned in the Bible here that demons are real and the spiritual realm is full of dark creatures. And we learned here that they can actually possess people. So the serious synagogue just turned into Halloween and everyone is scared. So when it comes to demons, we need to know who they are. They're fallen angels. So you'd actually be surprised if you saw one. There, there have been missionaries who've reported some of their converts, for example, down in Venezuela, where the witch doctors engage in the dark spiritual arts every day. Some of them have gotten saved, and they've reported what it was like for them to go into the spiritual realm every day. And surprise, surprise, these demons are not dark, frightening beings with horns. They actually are beautiful more beautiful than anything you can see on earth. They've, the way they talk, they're glorious, and they make promises, and encountering them makes you feel warm and powerful and secure because they are fallen angels. But they also can speak in dark voices and be frightening and cry out, which is what's happening here. This reminds us that there is spiritual warfare all around us. Satan started a rebellion in heaven. Satan, of course, was one of the archangels, one of the chief angels. And he was designed and built to extol the glory of God in heaven and on earth. He refused that. He wants to overthrow God's kingdom and prevent any of us from entering God's holy kingdom forever. He wants to build his own kingdom where he is the dark Lord and he is the father of lies. He will do whatever it takes to turn you from God. This is real. And you could see it if God allowed you to. There are people in the Bible who were given a view into the spiritual realm. For now, we have to believe this by faith. One day you will see it with your own eyes. Now, maybe you think we're more educated than that today. Nobody believes in this mumbo jumbo about demons. You'd, you'd be very wrong. Actually, most people believe in a spiritual realm. Most people believe angels exist, that there are some dark powers too. That's why people still meddle in witchcraft, tarot cards, and spirit worship all over the world today. In fact, if you ask someone, has anything ever happened to you to convince you that there is a spiritual realm full of light and darkness, they will usually say yes. Something has happened that they can't explain just by science. So they encountered demons Jesus alone could command in the synagogue during Jesus' sermon. So write this down. Are you amazed that demons feared Jesus? Are you amazed that demons feared Jesus? This demon cries out, what have you to do with us? Jesus of Nazareth knew who he was, knew where he was from. Nazareth was a kind of known for being a trashy town. So we don't know why he called him Jesus of Nazareth, but we know that he was telling the truth about Jesus and he was afraid. Demons aren't just afraid, they're terrified when they encounter the Son of God. They often will beg him for mercy. Have you come to destroy us? Do you know demons know that judgment is coming? Do you know spiritual beings in heaven know their destruction is certain? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Now, why would a demon be afraid of Jesus? Do you remember this story in Acts when we went through that book of the seven sons of Sceva? They show up. They, they wanted to exercise a demon. And it was like seven on one. These were the religious guys. And one demon beat all of them, stripped their clothes off. They ran out of the room bloody and naked. One demon. A demon is strong enough to rip your arm off if he wanted to. And he's begging for mercy from the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know what that reveals? That reveals that Jesus is stronger than them. He says, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Now that's amazing. That's amazing. Demons feared Jesus and in their fear declared the truth about him and begged him for mercy. 
because they knew Jesus could with there are already demons who really cross the line they're already thrown in the pit right now okay Satan's smarter than that and and so he's still free but some of the demons that he commanded that cross the line are in the pit right now gloomy dungeons chained very scary stuff so there's a literal fear that this demon could be thrown into judgment right now by Jesus Jesus is the judge Notice how afraid the demon was of Jesus because of his spiritual authority. And notice how powerful he is. When Jesus commanded him, the demon had to come out, but the man shook violently and was thrown to the ground. Demons have incredible power. And notice how clear it was to the demon that Jesus is the Holy One of God. Later, in a parallel passage about this incident, they will call him the Son of God. The Son of God, the Holy One of God. How do we ID Jesus? How do we know who he is? Well, the demons will tell you because they fear him. And this title, the Holy One, the Holy One of God, one variant of it would be the Holy One of Israel in the Old Testament, is incredible. How do we know Jesus is divine? One way we know that is because titles of God are applied to Jesus. Listen to, to Habakkuk 3, 3, which talks about this title of God. God came from T-Man and the Holy One, the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah, his splendor, listen, covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. His brightness was like the light. Rays flashed from his hand. There he veiled his power. Before him went pestilence and plague followed at his heels. He stood and measured the earth. He looked and shook the nations. Then the eternal mountains were scattered. The everlasting hills sank low. His were the everlasting ways. The demon called him that? The Holy One? Isaiah 43, 3. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, your Savior. The demons called him that? Are you amazed that the demons feared him and rightly identified him as the Holy One? Are you amazed at who Jesus is? So do you understand what this means? They heard doctrines Jesus alone could fulfill. We encountered demons Jesus alone could command. Do you understand what this means? Right now, all around us, there are angels and demons stronger than you, no matter how many times you went to the gym this week. Well, I got, my, I got my max up. You don't understand. I'm feeling good, feeling strong, feeling... It doesn't matter. They're cloaked. Could take you out in no time. Do you realize Jesus is stronger than all of them? That he has divine spiritual authority in heaven right now. There was a surprising reaction in the synagogue. It says here that they were amazed, in verse 27, they were amazed... So that they question among themselves, saying, who is this? What I love about this story is there they are in synagogue. Everyone's so serious. The serious people around a demon start shrieking and screaming. And then they're amazed at Jesus. I'd be freaked out at the demon personally. I'd be running. They're looking at Jesus in amazement. That's ironic and awesome. Who is he? Surprise reaction. Stronger than the demon who just cried out during synagogue. Do you realize that you need security to overcome the forces of darkness in the spiritual realm? These beings are beyond your detection and power. How many of you have a ring cam set up at home? You got a ring cam or a security system? Raise your hand if you've got a ring cam or a security system. Guess what I checked? User manual doesn't say anything about detecting the forces of darkness. Won't show up on the ring cam. You need Jesus. Do you see how much you need Jesus? You should understand that your soul is harassed, tempted, and tormented by dark spiritual beings every day, and Jesus alone can command them all to be gone forever. You have no hope apart from him. You will be easily outmatched and overcome. You will fall under their power, spell, and authority in this realm, and you will spend eternity with them without the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Are you amazed that demons fear Jesus? And have you invited Jesus to be your defense against the kingdom of darkness? Because only he can welcome you into the kingdom of light, where you are protected forever against foes like this. Number one, we heard doctrines Jesus alone could fulfill. Are you amazed that Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament? Number two, we encountered demons Jesus alone could command. Are you amazed that demons feared Jesus? Number three, jot this down. We saw diseases Jesus alone could cure. Doctrines, demons, diseases, day in the life of Christ. We saw diseases Jesus alone could cure. Let's read on after synagogue time. It says in verse 29, Immediately he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew, that's Peter, with James and John. These were, of course, the inner four. We heard their call uh, last week. So now they're in Peter's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever. Immediately they told him about her. He came and took her by the hand, lifted her up. The fever left her. She began to serve them. That's amazing. That's pretty incredible. And just to locate you in the timeline here, because you've heard amazing, Jesus walked on water and raised the dead. I've heard all these amazing stories since I was a child. As of this point, the only miracles we have recorded is Jesus turned the water into wine in Cana. He did some things in the temple that aren't exactly recorded. Then in Cana, again, he healed the official's son. That's all that's happened so far. Okay, so we don't know the rest. So the disciples have early sightings of his power, but now he just walks over, heals Peter's mother-in-law, boom, fever's gone, he gets up. And you might be like, well, that's an easy one. I mean, fevers stop all the time. How do we know Jesus really healed her? Sometimes people feel better. She's got company coming over. Maybe just felt like she needed to get up and get to work, right? Well, then look what happened. That evening, verse 32, at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. Hey, what would you feel like if you woke up with a fever today? You're not even at church. You're online. And suddenly we announce that the entire city of Palos Heights is coming over to your house tonight. And by the way, they've got demons and diseases, so watch out. Well, this is what's happening right now. The whole city was gathered together at the door, and he, Jesus, healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. We saw diseases Jesus alone could cure. So raise your hand if you have an insurance card in your wallet or purse right now, the health insurance, and it Blue Cross and Blue Shield, Humana, Advocate. I don't know, you go to the doctor, they give you that chart the little clipboard, and you got to check all the things that you have. If you live long enough, you're going to have to check all the boxes eventually. Am I right? The older you get, the more your body becomes like a used car, an old classic car maybe. And that's just something's going to fly out of there when you open the hood, and they're going to have to put you back together again. Welcome to humanity. We're going to get sick. We're going to get hurt. So they bring all the sick people to Jesus. He heals all of them. He heals all of them. Instantly and permanently, he heals them right there. And the apostles were eyewitnesses of all of this. Have you ever heard someone say, you can't trust the Bible? How many of you have heard somebody say that? Raise your hand if you've heard someone say, oh, you can't trust the Bible. That, that thing's been changed. You don't even know who wrote it. You know, you know one reason why you can trust the Bible? Because eyewitnesses wrote it. It says right here, Peter and Andrew, James and John, the whole city came out and saw this. This wasn't done in a corner. This wasn't hidden behind a shed. And then some guy with a bum arm comes out and he's like, I'm healed. This was done right out in the open for the whole town to see. That's why you can trust the Bible. And Jesus is doing all of these amazing miracles for hours. Write this down. Are you amazed Jesus could heal any disease instantly? Are you amazed Jesus could heal any disease instantly? We see the love and compassion of Christ. He's had a busy day, preached the sermon, encountered a demon. Maybe he just wants to get to bed, have dessert. The whole town shows up and he just heals person after person. It exercises demon after demon. We see the love of Christ and we see the love of Christ towards you. 
We collect prayer requests every week as a church. Most of the prayer requests that we get deal with either someone who's suffering physically or someone they love who is suffering physically. Doctor's appointment coming up <clears throat> or something went wrong, they got hurt on the job. Most of what we carry in suffering is physical issues. It's good to know that Jesus loves you just as much as he loves all of these people who have these physical issues. He was willing to see them, he was willing to heal them, and he sent them on their way. Now, we have to ask ourselves, why doesn't everyone get healed today? That would actually seem to be a better plan, that anyone who comes to church, Jesus will heal you. And unfortunately, there are many churches and pastors who promise that, that just if you have enough faith, you can get your healing today. And that's simply not biblical for a few reasons. First of all, that misses the entire point of why this unprecedented amount of healing was happening in the New Testament. You won't read about these healings in the Old Testament. And even though some of the early apostles and church leaders and church fathers record healings continue, there, there's nothing like what we're going to read about in the ministry of Jesus. It's amazing. He could heal anything on sight visibly, instantly. The point of that, we have to know why. Should everybody say why? Why did signs and wonders and healings happen? We covered this in the book of Acts. Isaiah 35, 4 to 5. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come, listen, and save you. Verse 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of of the deaf unstopped, the lame will leap for joy. Do you know why these healings happen? To show Jesus is the Savior and to show spiritually he can open your eyes. Spiritually he can open your ears. Spiritually he can set you free. You once were lost, now you're found. That's why the healings were happening. So you have to know the purpose of the healings and you have to also know the precedent in the Bible, Jesus was able to heal anything at any time. And then in the book of James, it says, if you are sick, go to your elders. Go to your elders, have them anoint you with oil. That's the way. Don't go find a healer online on YouTube, but go to your elders and have them pray for you. So that's what we are to do today. Do people still get healed today? Yes. Do demons still get sent out today? Yes. But I need to warn you against being deceived. Jesus could heal any disease instantly. And if you go find these YouTube healers, or if you watch Benny Hinn on TV, listen, they heal no one instantly. Benny Hinn has zero recorded confirmed healings. Listen, zero. You have to be very careful. I've talked to people in our church. One woman came up to me. She was getting into all these videos. The church needs more healings today. And I said, listen, you aren't on those videos, you aren't seeing anything like what you read about in Scripture. Oh, yes, I am. People are getting healed. No, they're falling down. They're convulsing. They're not getting healed of anything and everything instantly and permanently right in front of your eyes. Okay, entire hospitals are not being emptied out today. You're not seeing that. So don't be deceived. Don't be deceived by online healers. They're not actually doing what we read about here. They are not visibly, instantly, permanently healing anyone of anything on sight. They're not doing that. Jesus is. So that's why Jesus should receive all of your worship. Jesus is one of one. He's the only one who has this wow factor. And you don't see online today people with cancer, people who are paralyzed, people who are blind and deaf, people with blood disease instantly, permanently healed of everything. You hear strange things of people convulsing, some weird trans pastors who seem to have some Jedi-like power. That is not what we're reading about here in Scripture. Extol the Lord Jesus alone because he could instantly, permanently heal on spot, in sight, and you're not seeing that anywhere today on earth like we're reading about it here. So don't be amazed by false teachers and false healers. We'll cover this more next week, but don't be deceived. Be amazed only by the Lord Jesus Christ. And based on the healing we're hearing about in Peter's hometown, understand who Jesus is. He is the Savior 
Only Jesus can open your eyes. Only Jesus can open your ears. Only Jesus can set you free. And everyone gets a new perfect body in heaven. Amen. Amen. God is only saying, wait, when you have physical problems, he desires not to heal on earth. But it's coming. There is an expiration date to every one of your trials. All of God's promises are yes and amen in Christ. Just because you can't go to Peter's house and get it all done right now, that's to show you your amen is coming. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the only one who can do it. So finally, write this down. Are you convinced he is the Savior? That's the whole point. What was it like to spend a day with Jesus? While we heard doctrines Jesus alone could fulfill, are you amazed? We heard demons Jesus alone could command. Are you amazed? And we saw diseases that Jesus alone could cure. Are you amazed? Are you amazed? Are you amazed? And do you realize what it means? That Jesus is the Savior. Two weeks ago, this sermon was called Real ID. How do we know Jesus is the Savior? We see more reasons today. He fulfilled scripture, he commanded the demons, and he healed all diseases. So let me ask you this. Do you believe the good news about Jesus? Is there a time in your life that you went from just hearing about the truths about Jesus to actually believing that he is the Messiah, the Savior, that Jesus alone can save your soul from sin, Satan, darkness, and hell forever? Do you believe? Do you believe the good news? I'm still standing, but things are falling over on the stage. A mighty wind is blowing. Hold tight to your seat and to your neighbor. Do you believe the good news? The kingdom of God is at hand. We are to repent and believe the good news. And let me ask you this. Are you a Christian who is tempted to forget the good news? Are you a Christian who's gotten some bad news recently? You're suffering. You're sick. You're feeling tormented or oppressed or, or, or tempted. Are you really tempted to forget who Jesus is? Remember, the book of Mark was written for lost people to learn the good news and for saved people to remember the good news. Maybe you need to remind yourself again that your Jesus has power over the word of God, that your Jesus has power over every dark force in the spiritual realm, that your Jesus has power over every physical thing you'll ever face. He's the Savior and the Lord of all. You need to see that again. You need to celebrate that again. You need to be amazed again. Are you amazed? Are you convinced that Jesus is the Savior? I want to close in prayer right now as the worship team comes back up. And I want to give you a chance in your heart to believe what's been uttered about Jesus Christ today, that he alone is the Holy One of God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now together and celebrate that in our souls. Lord Jesus, right now we pray based on the wonderful things we've heard today. We spent a day with you, Jesus, a full day, sun up to sundown, amazing doctrines you fulfilled demons who had to do exactly what you said, diseases you cured instantly on the spot forever. Oh Lord, we are convinced you are the Savior. I pray for any today who are ready to repent and believe the good news. Lord Jesus, save them. In their souls right now, may they say a prayer, meaning it with their heart. May they say this, and you could say this with me in your heart. You can say, Jesus, I repent. Say that in your heart. Jesus, I repent. I turn from my sin. I believe you are the Holy One of God. I believe you are the Son of God. And maybe there are Christians today who need to say that again. They need to say, Jesus, I'm so tempted to doubt you. I'm so tempted, Lord, to be discouraged and dismayed. Lord, I've waited so long for things that I've prayed about. But today I've heard that these people waited thousands of years for the Messiah to come. And when you came, you healed it all. You made it all right. Jesus, we believe you will come again soon, sooner than we think. And you will make everything right again. 
goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So Lord, anyone here today who's sick or weak, anyone here today who's tempted or feels like a failure, may they re remind themselves again, you are the Holy One of God, the eternal Son who will rule. We can trust you and your power over everything in our lives. We love you, Jesus, and we worship you. And we pray this in your mighty name.